But let's move on to the, the next tool here, and that is our secondary. Our secondary is, is one of the more powerful tools that you've got in your pocket here. Uh, what the secondary does, I'm going to add another note on this, uh, it selects a very specific color vector uh, based on hue, saturation, and luminance. And then you're able to just affect that region based on a key that it creates out of your hue, saturation, and luminance. With my secondaries loaded, I can move up and I can select, uh, let's say, a portion of the, of the face here. And uh, I'm going to turn on my highlight and see what is being selected here. This is a gray versus color uh, mask here. And it's showing whatever is in color is what I'm selecting. Whatever is in gray, it's leaving out. Now I can move down and I can change the width of the hue that it's selecting. So if I'm trying to get more of the face, I can choose more or less saturation. And these kind of triangles is how it feathers off of this full region that it's selecting right here. See how we can grab this and shift it. And we're selecting more of the face. Yeah, I just want to get the face more, the skin more than I want to get like the shirt or the wall or anything else. So I use the hue, saturation, and luminance to choose the portion of the image that I want to grab here. And that's looking pretty good. I'm grabbing most of the face there. We can uh, increase the width I don't want to get. Now it's interesting that the face shares a lot of color with red here. You can see kind of the red as I open that up. Skin hue is very close to red uh, for, for pretty much all people. Uh, skin tone deals with the darkness uh, of, of your skin, how light or dark your skin is, but skin, he, skin hue, uh, everybody kind of shares the same hue, which is kind of blood colored, which makes sense. So with the second, with with adjusting things based on hue, which is your color shade, saturation, how intense that color is, and the luminance, the range of luminance here, you can select a certain portion of of your face, of the sky, of green leaves, of the reds on this paint here, uh, or on the on the uh, dough can there. You can select, and then you come down here and you can finesse your mat, which is, your mat is basically what you're leaving in and what you're taking out. So the denoise, I'm going to slide the denoise over, and it's going to clear up kind of that noise in the outer region and clean this up a little bit more. You can clean the black. The Black and white is basically this. this is another type of your uh, image right here. Uh, your black is what's being keyed out and your white is being what's, what is left in. Now if you're going to clean the black here, it'll darken the darkened areas and clean that up a bit. Clean white will intensify the white regions. And then blur radius is one of the more helpful things here. I'm going to turn off this key right there or go back to... Go back to the, the gray. This is your gray in color, and this is your black and white. And I'm going to blur the radius. This is just going to soften that mask. You can see how soft that gets. It. You don't want it to go too much where it will bleed outside the face. But now that we've got that, let's go back to our, let's turn our mask off. And now that's the only portion that's going to be affecting is the skin. So if we want to take the skin and uh, anything we do to it now on this node here, we can go to any one of these tools here and affect it. If we go back to our color wheels, we can shift her, the skin to kind of purplish, bluish. We can... Uh, make it more greenish. We can just change the hue here as much as we want. We can grab the overhaul all hue here. Uh, in fact, let's bring up just the mask here and look at the mask so we can look at our skin tones. And our skin tones need to kind of maybe put, be pushed over. Well, let's do this because right now it's probably reading portion of that can, which is even more red. So I'm going to go to my masks here and we're going to create a circle mask and just kind of put it on her face right now. So that's all we're reading is just the skin tones on the face. And now if we look at our scopes here, that skin tone looks like it's, it's pretty darn accurate. Maybe a little pushing off to the red there. We could uh, we could change the hue. Let's go here and change our hue and just circle it just to the left a teeny, teeny bit. And it's not going to be a big difference. For some, but this is what you do to get skin tones to kind of uh, look, be look better. So let's turn our... Let's go back to our primaries and turn our mask off. Or let's go up to the top here and turn our mask off. And let's... Actually, turn this. Let's turn this last node on and off that we did with the secondary, and see what that kind of looks like. Let's bring this closer and go Command D. Very subtle. Probably didn't. Let's, let's make it a little more extreme, just intense, just so you can kind of tell. Let's make it more green, so you can kind of tell the difference now. I know we're not gonna. She's not gonna be green, but look at the difference here. Just turn that on and off, and just see what that does. But yeah, that, that that's a good tool. The secondary is a really good tool for uh, fixing skin tone. For fixing skin hue and skin tone. Aside from the masking tool, I'll probably be getting that in a future episode, but these are the main tools you're using to color grade are your primary wheels, your curves, and your secondaries. Your, what they call the qualifier, but this is actually what's called secondary color correction when you're grading an image based on its range of hue, saturation, and luminance. Well, we've gone through the scopes, we've gone through the tools, and in the next episode we're going to be covering how to grade a project.